Jess, I've, I've heard you do need some help, though, you know. Who's going to run camera while Jessup does his fantasy picks? Because yeah, well, I was, was going to mention that. I I didn't bring that up, Jessup. Yes, so, I mean, it's going to be just terrible that he won't get them all in. Oh, darn. I'm going to feel so bad. When I have, when when I, when I have like, somebody help me in the tower for a little bit, don't worry, I'll, I'll help you pick. I'll take your phone and then I'll throw it down the grandstands. Welcome back, everyone, to the Track Packers podcast for number episode number four of season three. Been a few weeks since we've been back together, but racing season is almost here. We can almost taste it, so I figured we'd probably get back in the swing of things. Myself, Mason Law, and Mr. John Breckel, Jessa Pelkey, and I don't know if she's going to call us hers, but hey, it's Miss Becca Pelkey. This is a new look. This is a new look. This is, this is the best she's looked in a long time. Well, John worked too late, and I'm tired, so this is the best I can give. Wow. This is, we, we're putting in 110% effort here on the Track Packers podcast. What the heck? Are, How did she do the thumbs up thing? How yeah. did you do that? I don't know. It just did it. All righty. Well, anyways, we're presented by Hitch Hardness, Mr. Tyler Hall of Fertile, Minnesota. I am saying modified racer, Minnesota modified racer. We want to thank him so much for supporting us on the podcast. Big time of year to kind of check out his website. Has all sorts of products, especially for the truck owners out there with a signature product of the Hitch Harness. Stores your receiver hitches safely and efficiently in the back of your truck. You can also check out other amenities that they have for racers, especially for pole bar brackets, chassis dollies, whatever you may find, check out the inventory. Thank you so much, Tyler, for supporting us on the podcast. As always, we do a lineup before each episode. It hasn't changed one bit since we started the lineup procedure for this year because for some reason, I always get stuck with the cautions. So Becca is on the poll once again, followed by John, Jessup, and myself. So Miss Becca, how are you doing? You look comfortable. And caution on the track for Becca not being in the proper form of the format She's, of the of the podcast. Well, if Becca well first of all, she, she has to she has to unmute herself. That's well, the that first is. that's the yeah, first objective. Yeah, caution on Becca for the mute. John, we just moved up a whole row. We did well, I moved up you moved up a whole row. I moved up already yes. in the front row. That was just my fault. John oh. worked super late, and now I'm tired, so now I'm in bed, and if you guys yammer too long tonight, I can just roll over and go to bed, so. We can hear smart. her snore like we heard Jessup snore that time on the podcast. Well, I don't snore, so there's that. I'll say, I don't think Becca snores. Jessup snores, and you can hear it from three counties over. True story. What? It's not this that bad. I have evidence that it's that not will that speak otherwise. <laughs> Do we need to have a caution flag on that one? You guys, are we this boring that Jessa fell asleep? Lies. No. no. Fallacy. I've only woken up once from my own snoring. Believe me. Probably because I was whacking you to, like, shut up. <laughs> Becca, did you know we have bats? So if you need one of those, you can come over and grab one. I heard you, I heard you have more vacuums. than one. You have a, pyra- a pyramid of <laughs> We have a vacuum, so you can use that as well. 
I hear you have all sorts of weapons just in case the you know the worst happens at the the Breckel house, but you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Would, we have, we are more than life. prepared. I would fear for my life to break into the Breckels. Not only is there enough weapons to supply a small, um, I I would say South American army, army but just the amount of vacuum cleaners that would tumble off of the mountain, I think could cause a small avalanche. It would, it would just, you know, you would go down instantly. Dead. Don't forget about all the bowling balls John has that, that is, you know, in several different rooms of his house that he could just take and just throw at someone. And then he would really off, How many did you bring to this latest tournament, John? Uh, I brought 16 to state. I own four. <laughs> so Mason has to have two bags. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, Miss Becca, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, still pregnant. Uh, been it's like the world's easiest pregnancy. Um, haven't been nauseous. Um, have. haven't been sick. Uh, no weird cravings. Um, really not overeating. So there's no eating for two. Um, the biggest thing is I'm just tired. Like I'm tired now. Um, so if, if John and Jessup yammer way too much than I, I might just go to bed. So there's that. But other than that, I'm getting ready for racing season. Um, Dakota Speedway has their test in tune this Saturday, um, April 13th. So does Devil's Lake. They're all, they're also having a test in tune this this particular Saturday, and the weather looks amazing. And then uh, racing season is just around the corner as those two tracks hope to kick off their 2024 season um, on April 19th and, and April 20th. So we'll see if the weather holds out. It's a little chilly as of right now, but we'll we'll see. So busy getting ready for the upcoming season. So there's a lot to do before tracks hit the track, cars hit the track. She corrected herself. Excellent, Becca. John, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I'm busy because we're in the middle of quarter end right now for work, which is typically every three months. So it's uh, it's that time of year already for us here within the work environment. But besides that, um, I'm excited. Racing season's upcoming, which means summer's on the horizon. So that's actually going to be a great thing. And um, and also I'm excited because in a couple weeks, I leave for nationals for bowling. So we're getting to that uh the end of the season with the bowling time frame and the start of the race season. So I'm getting getting excited to see cars hit the track again. Um, weather looks gorgeous, like Becca had mentioned, for Saturday. So I think um, Test and Tune will be be a fun time over at Dakota Speedway, man. And that's where I'll be on Saturday night and evening and, um, and then ready for the opener in the upcoming week. Yeah, and you've been going down to Vegas for various things, work and bowling. So have you got enough winnings in bowling to kind of work on that home in Las Vegas so that we can kind of utilize well, it? Well, yeah, I need to get a second residency as well. I mean, I've been to Vegas multiple times already this year. Um, I, I could actually get a job probably as a tour guide in Vegas. I, you know, I've, I'm very good at getting people to their location and where they need to be. And then even what shows they should see and what shows they should not see. That's very helpful. That is very very helpful as a tour guide. Awesome. Mr. Jessup, how are you doing, sir? Well, we're doing good, Mason. Another day, another dollar. Happy wife, happy life. That's about it. Excellent. Nice and simple. Yeah. I'm doing well myself. I'm in kind of getting ready. Well, I'm ready for the race season, trying to get the last couple of things done. Got my drone certification renewed, so that's all good. Just need to get a couple pieces for my drone so I can fly it uh, once the race season actually starts and hopefully going to join you all for the season over in Mandan as the first race of the year in just a week and a half or so. And so if this is your first time tuning in, be sure to give us a like and follow on the Track Packers podcast, both our Facebook page and follow our show on YouTube. If you're an audio listener, Spotify, Google, and Apple is where you can find us and feel free to give us a five-star review on either Spotify or Apple, and be sure to write a review so that way Jessup can utilize his great reading skills and read it out loud for us on the show. And here's the thing, Jessup. Everybody, he's been practicing, so he's been getting better at reading over you know the last couple of weeks. So he would be very, very good at reading a great review here from the Track Packers podcast. The cow says moo. I thought he got paid to lead, not read. 
Or at least I've heard him say that numerous times. I've heard him say that too, but you know, but you know reading when it's is for important. The when it's for the people, John, I will make an exception. We're trying to expand his horizon with educational skills. Yeah, Very much so, because you never know when they'll get put to use. No. Anyways, we will officially start episode number four of season three, three with a waving or drop of the green flag and get right into who or what are we repping. Miss Becca, since you are on the poll, you get to go first. Wow. As you can see, I, I'm in bed. And so um, I uh, didn't exactly uh, care for this. Um, so I am repping. Uh, I've worn this before on the podcast, but uh, it was nice and comfy as I crawled into bed. I'm wearing my Marlon Seidler uh, hoodie that he came out with some recent apparel a couple years ago. So um, I'm wearing my Marlon Seidler hoodie. It's nice and comfy. Makes me feel cozy as I uh, prepare for bed. We'll see. I have a question. And I yes. already know the answer to this, I'm pretty sure. Do you normally wear sweatshirts to bed? Actually, I normally see I normally sleep naked, but I didn't think that would be appropriate for tonight. All righty. This makes more sense. I have connected the dots. Oh look, the thumbs up again. Yep. Excellent. Well, uh, okay. Good. So I have two questions, Rebecca. Sure. Okay, so so question number one is. Is that your hoodie or is that Jessup's hoodie? I believe this is the XL. It uh, kind of looks like a dress when I wear it. Um, we actually took some baby bump photos. I, I'm not really showing uh, as of yet. I kind of look like I have to take a giant poop. Um, but I guess you could say that it's a, a baby bump. But uh, we took some baby bump photos. And uh, afterwards, I put on a hoodie and uh, we, had, we sat down for dinner. And I made a bomb ass dinner tonight. So uh, true. I, I Good job, Becca. this message. Yes. Okay, so, so that was uh, question one. Yeah. Now, question two is, it's Marlin related. And it might be a rumor on the streets, but I'm pretty sure it's a confirmed rumor. So, are we going to be able to see Marlin in one car this year or two cars? I have confirmation from his uh, crew chief that uh, there will be some double duty this season. Is this nice. news that is supposed to be released, though? Well, it's getting released now on the Trackbackers podcast. <laughs> I, I think it's a really bad kept secret because I've heard it from numerous people. And uh, yeah, so I mean, if new, if lots of people know, probably we're going to let lots of people care. know now, apparently. You know, more people know now. Well, I mean, there's got to be some new competition. The Sport Compact's coming up, so excited to see what Marlon does in there. I heard it was a sport mod. I heard it was an IMC hobby stock. Well, technically, I... when unless he switched totally from his modified, I don't think he can race a sport mod and a modified. Can he? Mason I is heard it was a mini mod yeah. outlaw. Outlaw mini mod. Oh, yeah. That's right. They're coming to Dakota Speedway. Oh, I forgot about that. Those outlaw mods. Well, you're all wrong. It's actually a Wasota late model because they're coming back to Dakota Speedway for the North Dakota Governor's Cup on July 26th and 27th. So don't want to miss that uh, doubleheader weekend at and Dan. Are you sure it's not a monster truck? I heard they're coming to Dakota Speedway too. I heard in August. Jessup, uh, I hear you might be riding in a monster truck in August. And with who? With people. Names, please. Well, we have we don't know if this is for sure yet, but it would be very cool if it was. It would be the original Grave Digger driver, Dennis Anderson, the legend. And I am more than ready to throw a bunch of cash at it to go ride with him. Just don't die, please. Jessup is a huge monster truck fan for those that don't know. I am I am a very avid monster truck fan. Which he, he, probably... he loves destruction, which it was very evident watching him win the World of Outlaws game this last weekend. What are you talking about? I raced clean. Just because I got cut off and I gave the person the chrome horn does not... I, Thank you, John. I'm not done. I'm not done, John. It does not... You weren't there, so... I saw videos. That was a Mason. 
Right. I I love how how Jessup's like I race clean, and then I got cut off, and I gave him the crone horn. That's not racing clean. Have you seen NASCAR lately? That is very clean. Not even well, going to touch that. <laughs> they have to move people out of the way in NASCAR because they have no drivability of the cars. If they can't even get drivability of word. The cars can't pass on those short tracks, so they have to bump everyone out of the way. Serious tri- drivability award. I'm pretty sure it's a word. Here's While a- he's looking that up, John, who or what are you repping? <laughs> okay, yes. so I went back in the closet tonight a little bit because speaking of NASCAR, we were actually John going through the closet. Good to know. Becca, Be- yeah, right. Becca, Mason, and myself have actually been talking about the old NASCAR races from back in the mid 2000s. You know, the era to where. At Daytona, they would get sometimes between 55 to 60 drivers registered to uh, to run like the 500, even the Pepsi 400, to try to qualify to make the race and even like Brickyard 400 area. So looking at that, I was like, I should find an old NASCAR shirt, which I did. But in the process of looking for NASCAR shirts, I actually came across another shirt from Dirt Track Racing that is kind of nostalgic a little bit. And so I, I decided to wear that. So, guys, here's what I am wearing. I know you guys are going to be shocked by this. It's a Stampede shirt. So, what a shock. I am wearing a 2002 stock car Stampede shirt. Wow. From Jamestown. So, it's got the 2001 winners on the back of it. And during that time frame, there was only five classes at the stock car Stampede. They used to get around 260 cars on a given race weekend. And who can tell me who the 2001 winners were at the Stock Car Stampede? We'll the start fans. with the Bombers first. The fans, John. The fans were the winners. The fans were the winners, for sure. I think I might know this, or I at would, least I have a couple back guesses, but during okay, well, you guys that. can guess, and then I'll let you guys know. We'll go. We'll go class by class. It would only take us about three minutes. I have. I don't know. I have a guess for bombers. I should say because I don't know who would have been a bombers at that time. Leanne Christensen. I think, no, I think I know because I actually have this information in my racing notes, and I see it from time to time. Is Kelly it Hoggle? Mason Grimes. No, Mason's right. It was Kelly Hoggle in two thousand and one. That one in a two seventy one car that actually got converted to a bomber. For, basically, it could also have been a roadhog. Nice. Back in the day. Okay, street stocks. Who won the street stocks in twenty in two thousand and one? Now, remember, Dave this Moss. driver is from Minnesota. Dave Moss, Scott Paulson. Yep. Dave oh Scott my Paulson gosh! Won back in two thousand and one. Wow. I should stop guessing it's, now. I'm not going to get another one right. The super <laughs> stocks were next, and who won in the super stocks? Dave and I'll give you a hint. This driver just sold his stock car at the end of last season. Randy Klein? Sold a stock Gosh, Mason, car. Mason and I were just talking about this stock car driver just, you know, last week. Uh, I've, I've been talking about many drivers. I don't know. <laughs> it's Todd Heinrich. Oh, okay. Of course. Todd Heinrich won in the 38 Super Stock back in the day. I was not going to get that one. Sorry, Todd. Mods. Who won in the Wissota Mods? I'll give you a hint. He was very dominant back in the day at Viking Speedway. Okay, I have a guess. Becca or Jess, do you have one? I don't know who uh, who was back in the day at Viking Speedway. Uh, I'm going to guess Scott Danziason. That is correct. And then finally, the, the Wasoda Lane models. And this driver also was very dominant at Viking Speedway. Jeff Wildown. Yes. Yes. Wow. So those were the Stampede winners from 2001. John. Mason, did, I just, did I just impress you, Mason? You did. John, James sounds going to have a, a retro night or a vintage night. Um, That might be a good shirt for you to bring back out for that particular evening. I think what? we all need well, to wear I'm white pants. I, I think so, we have to all wear white pants for that. By the way, I have white pants because of so the I. all just wear those. John, you I have like all... every color pants. <laughs> now, Mason, that is not true. I've only got 12. 
Oh, okay. Of one color. I need. I don't have any white pants, but I should probably get some. That would be fun for retro night. <laughs> Mason, they would look very nice on you. Well, thank you. Jessup, you're up next with who or what are you repping? I am repping a... What did Meidinger call it? An uh, obscure shirt. It is of... It's actually just kind of a cool looking shirt, to be honest. It's got an uh, orange, blue, and white uh, base, and it is Radical Rick Martin, and he's sponsored by Propane Plus. So, this is Hank Hill's kind of stock car, I guess, race car. It's, been it's sad that that was the first thing I thought of when I saw the word propane. Mm -hmm. Been propane. hanging around Jessup way too long. And propane accessory. Radical Rick Martin. I think he's from out east. I could be wrong, but uh, he does uh, asphalt and cement racing. So uh, obscured would be a nice way of saying it. And this shirt will be officially going into the pile of giveaways at some point. There we go. So, We're going to have like a garage sale at some point. <laughs> so wait a second, though. Jason Meininger does not want that shirt. No. No, he hasn't. Oh, okay. Shirt. I thought maybe we could, you know, gift it to him. <laughs> we could. Oh, that'd be a good gift. He wouldn't understand. No, Jason Meidinger pointed out that Jessup should rephrase how he puts his uh, t-shirts instead of saying, um, how, what was irrelevant. the irrelevant? Irrelevant. Yeah. It's the more the theme of irrelevance. Could be obscure. Mm. Yeah. A little more politically correct. I do agree on that aspect. Nice obscure shirt, Jessup. Thank you. Now, Mason, what are you wearing? So, repping Lindsay Hansen for the hat. The koozie this episode is Fiesta City Speedway. Very nice group of people down there in Montevideo, Minnesota. Got this koozie at their banquet a few weeks back. And for the shirt, a little bit back in history as well. This is the 99 of Sean Strand. Oh. Can anyone guess what year this is? Well, I can guess the size. It's probably a size extra medium. You're correct on the Mason. size. Mason, that was 2006. Or it was either 2004 or 2006. 2004. Wow. 2004. This is definitely one of the one of my longer tenured shirts. I don't think it says the year on the back, but... It says 99, John. I was going to look, because I think he actually won the track championship up in Nodax Speedway either in 2003 or 2004. He might have won back-to-back -back years, actually. Um, I'd have to double-check on... In the in Nonak yearbook, but he was very, very dominant up in Nonak Speedway for a few years during this time frame. And so definitely was part of the reason why I got one of these shirts growing up as a young little lad at the racetrack. And so digging in the old reservoir of shirts for this week's Who or What Are We Repping? And so to continue the trivia and look back into history, we will turn to Jess up with the hot sauce. Hot Memory Rewind is, I think, what we called it. And we want to give a shout out to Mr. Isaac Hot Sauce Sandro himself, who just revealed his paint scheme officially for the 2024 season. Nice, bright, white looking modified this year. It's really going to stand out on the track. And so it's a new car, new to him. And so uh, going to be excited to see how he does this summer. Be sure to stop over the Sandro Snack Shack. He's got an upgraded trailer and he's going to have all the fixings this year in the pits. And so thank you so much, Isaac, for supporting us on the podcast. And so... What do we have this week for the Hot Sauce Memory Rewind? Say, well, we say got... that five times fast. Hot, hot sauce, sauce Memory Rewind. Hot Sauce Memory Rewind. Memory hot rewind. Sauce Memory Rewind. Hot Sauce Memory Rewind. Hot Sauce Memory Rewind. Yeah, we got it. Be careful and when so... you ask rhetorical or literal questions on this podcast, folks. John, I think we did it. We did it. High we, five we... to us. All right, John. We got three photos, really two photos, and kind of like a a sports card for you to identify. We're going to start with the sports card. All right. Okay. Now, you are to name the year, the driver. You can even see their well, autograph. The, the autograph is there. It's Peter's is the last name. <laughs> I don't, is it Dale Peters? They're from 
the general Midwest region. Okay, so for year, I'm going to guess that's like a 1994. Okay. And you think it's Dale Peters? Yes, I don't know that paint scheme. All right. This is David Peterson of, how do we say it, Mason? Mina. Mina, Mina. Mina South Dakota. And this is his 1999 Hero Sport Card. Ooh. Okay. So the next okay. two, just double checking here. Okay. Okay. I was say that one I did not necessarily know. I didn't know if you would know that because I know you go to Jamestown quite a bit growing up, but I don't know if you went back that far. All right. And so I don't remember see I don't remember that paint scheme. That was, you know, I'm very photogenic from my memory. Okay, That's so who's the next pretty one? Pretty cool car with the big Coca-Cola sponsorship on it. Pretty neat. Kind of reminded yeah. me of like Matthews back in the day. Now this is gonna be a a, a tricky one here, John. This is tricky. Okay, the 55 machine. Yep. So Dwayne Mater. What did he, what do you think the year is? Oh, uh that would be two thousand and eight ish. Well, he had the two thousand part right. And I knew this would trick you because I showed Mason the pr photo prior to it. We'll give you another chance here. Oh, so that's a Chris Burbick photo. I don't know if that's Dwayne's car or not. That doesn't look like Dwayne's car. This is Corey Mater. Corey's, okay. And this is Greg N Nippold. Nippold? Okay, I remember that name, yep. Yep, he still races. Yep, he still East. races. Now, and the year was 2001, according to the timestamp on the back of the photo. Okay. All right, John. Last one. See how you can do here. You ready? Oh, this one, I, I'm not sure on this. Uh, Dolaba, maybe? This. And it looks like maybe that has to be, I would say, 95-ish, 1995-ish. Again, back of the photo states in 2001, but it could be wrong. It just could be when the film was printed. However, mm -hmm. this is Johnny Corral. John Corral's car. Oh, really? I would have never guessed that. Yep. I uh, When I pulled it out, I just figured it's a local name, which would be fun for us. But it's a little obscure, it seems like. Or the person who may have mislabeled it, but it says John Corral on the card, on the photo. So... Mm. We will go with John Corral for this time around. Could have been like a transition where he just bought the car, potentially. Or he was racing it for somebody, potentially, too. Could be. I don't, 83 is not a really popular number. I only can I can only name, think of a couple 83s. Like, I think, well, probably Jack Honshill is the first one I think of. But even around this local area, I can't really think of too many 83s. Yeah, you don't think of 83 as a racing number too much, or even a sporting number. Mm -mm. No. But that was that. Wow. I guess if anyone has any hindsight as to why John raced that car or that number, they could leave the, that um, racing tidbit or racing history info in the comments. For sure. That would be really interesting to know. But... We'll put the old photo, sh photo stack away for another week or another episode. And we'll put it in with the rest of the photo stacks in one of five containers. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we got plenty to go through on those photos. So awesome. Thanks so much, Jessup, for the hot sauce memory rewind. 
Moving into our track pack report, we had a couple of events take place over the last couple of weeks, including the Jamestown Speedway 2023 banquet, which the three of us were at. John was coming back from bowling that weekend, and then we had the Dakota Speedway Mall show this past weekend. And so I'll go to Becca first. Uh, what did you think of the Jamestown banquet? Uh, I thought it was a very nice turnout. Um, Tim and Allison always do a very nice job. Um just uh, giving the the drivers, the fans, the volunteers, uh, the credits that they deserve, um, the thanks, the kudos. Uh, they just do a really nice heartfelt job of just thanking all of their volunteers, their 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 drivers, and their and, and everyone who came. Um, they did. They gave a little. Uh, they call it state of the racetrack address. And so they gave a little preview as to what people can expect for the 2024 season. And then you and I Mason uh, handed out the, the awards for the top 10 in each racing division. So very nice banquet, um, good food, good times with good people. So all around, it was a really uh, just, it was good to see racing family uh, before the racing season started again. Absolutely. I, I, I always like James Jamestown's banquet. It's nice, nice, kind of like nice and simple. Good to get everyone back together. Jessup, any any thoughts you had from the banquet? Yeah, it was a good time. Good to see a bunch of our Jamestown friends catch up, get some information that is always good to get and hear from. Uh, got a little schedule updates from there. They're having the fair race again. Seems like it's going to be a big, big time thing. It sounds like it should be... Uh, a fun time for everyone who goes there. Also, the fair race is getting moved from Saturday to Wednesday, which apparently is a big deal um, as it is coming back for the first time in a good number of years to have midweek racing. And that should be pretty exciting, I think. Um, something different, something fun for our uh, race fans to look forward to in the middle of the week, which, I mean, we... We always build towards the weekend, so it's uh, something a little different. Yeah, and especially with the midweek, you get a, a, the opportunity for a different group of fans to come in and experience racing because you know some people work on the weekends, aren't able to make her, they go to the lake or something. So I think it'll be a good opportunity to get a different crowd in there as well. Yep, and the other thing I really liked that they, uh, I think they said they started last year, but um, I really noticed it this year. Um, was instead of having rookie of the year, they had a year rookie class or a rookie class for last year. And I think that's pretty cool because um, I, it it takes away the emphasis of having to win. And if you don't win, it doesn't kick the other people down a peg or two. Uh, after their rookie season. So it's kind of a nice little thing to acknowledge all the other rookie drivers um, across all the classes. So I, I thought that was pretty neat and a, a nice touch to things. Yeah. And I was actually impressed with the attendance because it was scheduled pretty late. I know they had some scheduling issues that were trying to sort through. And so um, we had all the champions there, good representation, in all the classes for like the top 10. That's always nice when you're announcing awards. It's like this year's champion and they're actually there. And so that's, that's always a, a plus too. So I, I enjoyed the banquet. It was nice to kind of hear about the little tidbits going on for the racing season. Like, obviously, the fair race, the retro night. They're going to try to bring back some of the uh, meet and greets before each of the race nights. Kind of a different theme each night. And so fans will get to see the drivers up and close before the race night even starts. And so I think that's cool to bring back that they kind of did that more before COVID. And kind of trying to get back into the swing of things in that aspect. And too. so exciting things coming for Jamestown this upcoming season. And then we had the Dakota Spring, uh Mall Show. I know John and Jess have got to take that in. John, what were your, uh, what did you see or hear at the Mall Show? So it it was very interesting. Um, we had quite a few cars down there. Um, pretty good attendance of cars again this year too, down at the Mall Show. Um, some very nice looking cars down there as well from the paint scheme perspective. A lot of drivers have kept it kind of similar to what they had for previous years, but they've changed up a piece of the paint scheme. Um, to make it basically different or a little bit unique. And then some drivers have completely changed um, color schemes altogether. So that part was kind of cool too. Um, congratulations out there to the winners. They were announced on Facebook here um, at the end of the weekend. And congratulations to all of them that ended up picking up the car show awards down from the Dakota Speedway Mall show. 
But uh, but no, the cars were in. They went in Wednesday night. They were in Thursday through Sunday. Um, they had a meet and greet on Saturday. I was not able to be there for the meet and greet on Saturday. I was over in Fargo this past weekend. But uh, but sounds like um, you know, a lot of people looked at the cars. They are ready to go on the track here this upcoming weekend, and um, and it's kind of exciting to see some rookies upcoming in several divisions as well. Yep, going to be a nice crop of rookies. I know there's all there's a bunch of legends again there this year, so going to have a strong field of legends and still the mystery of uh, who's all going to show up for those stock cards. I know there's been a lot kind of released and rumored out there, so they're just kind of keeping things under wraps until test and tune this upcoming weekend or the doubleheader next week. Jessup, any additional takeaways from the mall show? Uh, let's see. We got a five-time modified back to back to back to back uh mall show champion so that's pretty cool um they also had multiple modifieds there this year so that that was nice um they're like i i would echo a lot of what uh john said a lot of nice looking cars some new i think there's a lot of little tweaks to former paint schemes that make them a little different than previous years. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and the fans can actually see cars that they can, you know, remember from the previous years. I know you NASCAR fans are having a hard time with the current paint schemes of all of your drivers because you can't recognize them because they're different every other week. But I think there are some really nice ones there. Uh, Kelly Horner's hobby stock was absolutely gorgeous i mean if you get a chance to see it before test and tune and before the first race and even after um there they put some time into that one because it looks from a distance it, it looks like a real dark purple or black from a distance but if you get it closer you can actually see the different like layering and texture, not textures, but a layering of the paint and the, the different purples that are actually in there. So it's pretty cool looking and it's a purple on top of a purple on top of a purple. And uh, I guess that's why they call it plum crazy sometimes. Yeah, definitely was a nice, it's a, it's a throwback to one of his old paint schemes in the Missouri yep. street stock. And so kind of paying homage to some of his earlier years in racing. And so um, that's actually a great transition and kind of what we're going to be talking about next, some paint schemes. Before we do that, we want to give a shout out to the real deal. V1 Brody Carls, who actually saw him this last weekend. He is all set to go for racing. Just, just needs some place to go right now. But uh, thank you so much, Brody, for supporting us. You can check out his podcast, The Real Deal with B1. Check him out on Spotify and Apple, as well as Facebook, where he'll be posting his shows. He's had a few guests on his shows over the last few weeks. And so definitely fun to see him pro progress and grow that. And so thank you once again, Brody, for supporting us on the Track Packers as well. Who wants to go first on some of their favorite paint schemes so far? There's been a lot, especially over the last week. I will There's say, a lot. I will say, I'm, I'm a big fan, and I'm I'm sure this will you guys will just slap your heads. I am a big fan of Brandon Shepard's 410 sprint car paint scheme. That was a I surprise. Think it, I think it's very cool. It, it it looks really cool. It's I I'm sure I'll catch some flack for this, but it's a throwback to his time with the. The Rocket House car, it's all Valvoline looking. So uh, that thing is sharp. It looks really good. I really wish we could see that car, that paint scheme uh, running full time in one of the national series because it's, it's really clean. Jessup, you know what today is, right? No. The day that we're filming this podcast? It's 410. Oh my day. God, it's 410. It's 410 National day. Sprint Car Day. Yes. That snuck up on me too. <laughs> well, I just we missed IMC Race Saver Day, so yeah, we kind of did. Yeah, you're you're right. <laughs> we'll have to well, keep, put that on the calendar for, for next year. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, no, but I think it looks sharp. It looks cool. Uh, man, I it's a, it's going to be a sweet ride. As he teams up with uh, Newman, uh, Jake Newman Racing, and they're out of Illinois, but that's that's pretty cool. All right, 
Oh, you guys go ahead. John or Becca, do you have a paint scheme that sticks out? We can kind of just bounce a few around for a few minutes. If you want to go first, I can I can follow you. Sure. So I'm going to go outside of our general viewing area. Um, Cody Pack, he, he uh, is a very talented graphic designer, and uh, he's been posting some of his hero cards for 2024. And one of the favorite paint schemes that I've seen uh, through via his uh, hero cards is from Ryan Gilmore more out of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, super cool modified. Uh, primary color is black, but on the sides of the car, it transitions from a bright yellow into an orange, into a pink, into a purple. It looks very retro-y, but also very, it gives very like a uh, Cali vibes. It's super cool. Um, just a really nice, nicely done and different. It's something different, which I truly appreciate. So uh, Ryan Gilmore out of Springfield, Missouri. Um, that was a car that definitely caught my eye when uh, seeing some of the, the paint schemes and the hero cards that he's been working on lately. And then I uh, got a sneak peek of Troy C. Peck Jr.'s uh, a new street stock for 2024. Primarily, mostly a black car, but it's got some really nice bright pink uh, uh, pinstripes on the side. And then uh, just, just a really nice sharp looking car for that street stock this year out west so those were some of the uh cars i noticed and really really liked so far excellent yep definitely some good looking cars there john you got a couple yeah no so i've, I've seen a couple of uh of drivers here too so um i'm gonna go with uh with brayden browers first i really like the purple on that car with the black overlay i think that's really 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 nice this year that turned out super super nice um he was practicing actually over at Cedar Lake here this past weekend as well. And that car, that car looks super, super sharp, especially in, um, in the sunlight. So that that car's been pretty cool to see for sure. Um, the other one that I saw, and I feel like he always has really nice paint schemes and he changes it up just a little bit each year um, was Jason Vandekamp's Midwest mod paint scheme. Super sharp again this year with the red there, but it's not an overbearing red um, along with kind of the black mixed in and some, some silver overlay. So, but uh, but yeah, no, really nice paint scheme from from both of those drivers as well that I've seen so far. Awesome, yeah. There's been both Vandicap always has some some really good paint schemes, and that was definitely one that stuck out to me too. I have like like six or seven listed. I'll I'll shout out a couple. Uh, <laughs> this actually just got released this tonight, like literally like a half hour before we started recording. Seth Klostrix with sort of street stock looks really cool. I believe his uh, kid designed this or had the idea because um, I think the last few years they've kind of gone with a Paw Patrol type paint scheme or incorporate that in this paint scheme a little bit. Well, this year they're doing Ninja Turtles. And so as you can see here, it's pretty, pretty dang cool. You'll definitely, this will definitely be a fan favorite and a kid favorite at the racetrack this year. So that, that car looks really sharp. I'll give a shout out to a couple of the race saver sprints. Uh, the Eisenshanks kind of mm -hmm. have like a like a conceptual drawing of their paint schemes this year, and th those will look really nice once they hit the track as well. I know Amelia had an accident in basketball where I believe she had like she's re rehabbing and recovering from the injuries, so we won't probably see her right away in the race season. So hopefully midway through the summer we'll be able to see both of them out on the racetrack at the same time. But both Amelia and, and uh, Layla Eisenshank have uh, some solid looking cars as well. I do need to give a shout out to Cole Gresseth. Like his, mm -hmm. he put a lot of work into this with Soda Street Stock this year with the, the Chevelle body and all the design and work that incorporated in that. I encourage you to go over his Facebook page, Cole Gresseth Racing, and check out all the work that he did to make that happen. That would That is definitely uh, one that will be a fan favorite this year as well. So that's just a few of the paint schemes that I noticed this year. Any any honorable mentions uh, for paint schemes? Well, we never got to Jessup. Jessup, what paint schemes do you like so far? Well, he got one, so you get a couple more. Hmm. There hasn't been a lot released yet. Uh... People are keep keeping him under wraps right now. Well, of course, this keeping... this weekend with Tess and Tune and Mandan, uh, Node XBA has their car show the following weekend, so we'll mm -hmm. see a lot of the locals there. I thought Tucker Peterson's late model was kind of unique. Um, close strike, cloth strike, or close strike. I can't, I always mess his last name up, but his car looks really cool. Um, oh, 
crud. Who did we just look at the other week? Who bought Todd's car? Oh, Joe uh, D. Joe D. D. Those Joe Didi and Adam Daney. Those two cars look really nice. I think those two are really sharp. They're clean looking. They're not over the top or hard to read, but they're very easy to read for your sponsorships. And the designs are kind of unique. So I like them. I also like I Matt Dosh's. Sorry, I also like Matt Dosh's uh, IMCA stock car. Um, he's one of those drivers that has a very similar paint scheme year after year, but he changes just little things up here and there. And uh, uh, JK Designs did a really nice job applying that uh, car wrap, and it looks really sharp this year. But uh, for the most part, it looks very similar to what he's had in the past. Just some minor changes here and there, but it looks really nice. Mm-hmm. Who else is out there? Yeah. The I really liked speaking of car show stuff because you know Grand Forks had theirs here just recently too. Uh, Joey Peterson's is way different than what it's been the last couple of years. Yeah. So Joey kind of changed up his lane model. That looks pretty cool. Um, kind of like that, uh, not really bright yellow, but kind of almost like a like a goldish, a little bit almost like a matted gold. So that was kind of cool to see. And then I also like Jory Berg's. Uh, Jory's I think is pretty nice too. Kind of went back to that, you know, the white theme because he was been black the last couple of years. And um, in that part, uh, I think that one will be pretty cool to look from the racetrack perspective, too. I will say I nerded out a little bit when I saw Terry Davenport's car at the mall show. Yeah, that was cool. It's a throwback. It reminded to me of too. Richmond, right? Yep. With Looney Tunes. Yep. NASCAR Looney Tunes. I remember that race and I watched that just last year. And so that was a fun race, by the way. You should check it out. Um, that, that that was a cool scheme. And Adam Goff's uh, IMCA stock car. Um, it's got a little bit beat up from his racing down in Florida already. So I don't know if he's going to refresh it a little bit, but uh, sharp looking car for this year for Adam Goff as well. So a lot of pain schemes going to be excited to see uh, more that will be released over this next weekend, especially with the nice weather. It's supposed to be in the 70s this weekend. So I'm assuming we'll see a lot of cars out in the sun or out at the racetrack, hopefully. Um to start the 2024 season or kick it off i bet we get 70 that's a pretty pretty good estimate i would that's a especially because i think do i'll talk a little bit about testing tune i think it starts at what five o'clock yep five thirty five thirty five thirty yep and it goes about 30. so you can get yourself a seat in the grandstands you can <laughs> you pay Which for the free. seat but you only you only need the edge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just in tune, 5.30, and I believe until about 9 p.m. is when they're uh when they're going in tone. I think they have like they have like soccer going on, so that's why it's a little bit later in the day. So so if you have a little bit of time or you're in the area of uh Mandan, swing on over to Dakota Sue, turn some laps, get everything shaken down before you guys start the actual racing season one week later. And so as we start to close our show with the white flag segment, is there any other rumors, developments, anything you want to shout out before we sign off? Um, I was just at the Tomlinson Sandro wedding, which congratulations to Marcus Tomlinson and Mariah Sandro, now Mariah Tomlinson. Uh, so I saw a lot of racing folks there and it was a great celebration and uh, heard some rumors there. Can't release a lot, but uh, definitely going to be some changes in the yep, coming year for some several drivers and so excited to see what's going to happen on the west side of the state well who wants to kick off rumors allegedly well speaking of marcus i know he he's he shares on snapchat that he's got a stock car so he's probably gonna be doing double duty at various points throughout the summer so it'll be interesting to see where and when he decides to do that and uh I think it's not going to take him long to get used to that. I think he, I think he raced Brody's stock car at Motor Magic during like the the Pittman's race, and so um, it's already got a good feel for what a stock car will be doing, and so uh, be excited to see what he does. I think there's going to be some surprises in the IMCA stock car division this year. I, I think there's going to be uh, drivers who either announced retirements um, in the last couple of years coming back to race. Um, full time. And I think there's gonna be drivers who never really did announce retirement, but more so stepped back from dirt track racing. 
now coming back and coming back in a stock car. I've, I've been hearing some rumors of drivers looking for stock cars and uh, hopefully they'll uh, be back on the track this year. So I think, um, not, I, I know we talk year after year how the INEX Legend Division keeps growing and expanding across the state. I think the IMCA stock cars are going to be growing this year and it'll, it'll be a nice growth and hopefully it'll uh, promote more travel between the tracks, especially uh, across the state, but hopefully more so across uh, Western North Dakota. Hey, did you guys see that? This just got posted about 15 minutes ago. Mason, you've been holding this information from us. Um, there's going to be, speaking of 410 day, um, NOSA just posted that Alex Trushinsky is going to be racing a 410 sprint car this year. Yeah, that's going to be an awesome addition. Mm -hmm. Well, they need them. So. Yeah, Mason. Yeah. Mason posted it in the comments, Jessup. See, this is where that reading comes into play. Yeah, it I never got posted on my end. So, oh, let's it, see. It's in our chat. <laughs> the last one I had that I got without it updating was uh, John's one comment. <laughs> <laughs> John's one comment. Loaded <laughs> statement right there. <laughs> John knows what he said. The one that cannot be said live on the podcast. That one. Yeah, that one. Mm. Way to go, John. Way to go. But which one is that? I mean, I, all of them really can't be said, you know, live because they're inappropriate. Anyways. Uh, yeah, but Alex is a very seasoned lightning sprint racer, and it's going to be excited to see him transition into the Ford 10s this year. That's a good, that's a really good addition. I would agree. Yep, I would agree. So, did. Did anyone else have any other rumors? I did want to give a shout out to the Gronwalds who are uh, they are partnering up with an organization called Never Alone. And it's a nonprofit uh, basically to advocate for, you know, suicide prevention, mental health. And they're doing a lot of great work with that this year through their racing. They're actually be utilizing the short tracker program over at I-94 Speedway, providing opportunities for some of these kids and um, people with disabilities to be able to experience racing a little bit. And so definitely check out uh, Brock's uh, Facebook page, Brockstar 2G, and also check out Never Alone on Facebook to find out more information, how you may be able to help if you were, want to donate or want to contribute in some way. Very cool thing that they're doing to help um, expand racing a little bit and provide opportunities for some of these folks. And so um, kudos to the Gronwalds for putting that together and excited to see what they do with that for 2024. Any last bit of rumors before we sign up for episode four, as we're going to be getting now into the regular schedule, hopefully starting next week. Well, you know, one of the rumors that no longer is a rumor um, out there was uh, Colin Hibden did release that he is going with Soda Lake model racing as well. So he opened his season over at Cedar Lake last week, Saturday, and ended up third in the feature behind uh, Sammy Mars and Pat Doerr. So a um, couple of very good drivers in front of him. But uh, but that'll be an interesting one that I'm very curious to watch this year because he's still going to do modified shows as well, but he's going to be focusing as well on the late model. Another hot shoe going in the late model. Boy, we're getting a lot of good talent in the late model class over these last couple of years. Now we just need more tracks to pick up late models. We need more late model specials. Mm -hmm. oh, let them run for a full season. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, that might not be too far off, especially with the way it seems to be growing with more and more drivers. Give the people what they want. Late models. More late model racing. Well, that'll do it for episode four of season three for the Track Packers podcast. As always, be sure to like, share, and comment. We always love to hear the feedback. Drop any questions you have, and we'll answer them on the show. Spotify, Google, and Apple is where you can find us in the audio form. Thank you to our sponsors, Hitch Harness. The Real Deal with B1 and Isaac Hot Sauce Sandro. Racing is starting in just a week or so, and we hope to see you out there packing the track.